I'm going to go off on a little tangent about transhumanism. Like everything, there's a middle road and there's an extreme. So in this video, I want to look at the middle road and what I believe to be an ethical approach to transhumanism. And then I'm going to go into the extreme, the unethical side of transhumanism. Of course, bundled into this is also artificial intelligence. I do have a personal story about AI that I will share with you, which is also an extreme where artificial intelligence is not helping people at all. So I want to start with a story about Serge. Serge was raised in the Church of Scientology. In his very early teens, he and a couple of other boys got into a bit of mischief, as they do. Here, I'll let Serge explain what happened. Do you remember what happened when you had your firecracker making accident? Yeah, um, I was uh, I was like 19 years old. I was making homemade firecrackers. Um, one of the firecrackers that I made um, while I was making it, it exploded, and I um, I lost one of my eyes. This is a glass eye, and I lost both my hands. They had to be amputated because um, um, uh, the, the explosion um, did, did too much damage to the hands, so they had to amputate them. But um, you, should ne you should never try to make your own fireworks or, um, or play with firecrackers or anything like that. I, just, um, I was a teenager, I was 19, and I was um, um, just doing something really dumb. You know, Some people get into drugs, they get into various different things. I, just, I got into uh, trying to make uh, firecrackers and um, I lost my hands and uh, I have uh, uh, marks on my face and uh, I made a bad I made a bad choice in my life you know that I regret. Yeah, there was like a piece of plastic that yeah. that um, hit the eye. Yeah. And it collapsed it. Yeah. They had to amputate it. Then you just take out the eye. Yeah. So they give me a, a glass eye. That's a glass eye right now. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Yeah. And then um, they had to amputate the hands. Okay. Um, and a different doctor did each hand on each, each side. Um, yeah. I, Originally, I had uh, prosthetics and a, a glass eye, but um, um, I lost both those during the time that I was homeless. They just fit, they just broke apart, you know, um, the, the, uh, the, the rubber bands broke, the, the cables broke. Um, the, eventually, the, there was just like a, a thing you could put your arm in, but then it, uh, it just, then I lost it. I lost, the, um, while I was on the street, I just lost my prosthetics. I made do with, uh, um, without prosthetics, you know, I just made do. Carrie Morrison, who um, was working with the police uh, to try to uh, make me uh, become conserved. The police picked me up for uh, jaywalking, and then they contacted psychiatry, and um, a psychiatrist from the Department of Mental Health um, chose to put me on a psychiatric hold. And then, then uh, a psychiatrist saw me and decided to um, maybe conserved, go to court, become a, a conserved person. So once I got conserved, um, I was off the street, and I've been off the street ever since. Okay, so uh, where are we right now? We're at Hanger Clinic, a prosthetics company. We're going to get some uh, prosthetics today. Awesome. How do you feel about that? Excited. Like about a, a year ago, uh, the Aftermath Foundation um, arranged for me to get uh, these new prosthetics. So um, I have prosthetics now again. What was the most satisfying thing you could do again with prosthetics? Um, just um, hold a fork or a spoon and um, eat food at a restaurant. I got a, a new prosthetic eye right here, um, a new glass eye. Um, uh, somehow they found the original people who made my original glass eye. The company had been bought by someone else, but um, they saw my medical records, and so I was able to get um, from the same people a new glass eye. Going through the motions, I'm dreaming of the ocean as I swim above a riverbed. Life is so fraudulent. Towel off my guilt as I shuffle through the silt. Draw a line in the sand. Wonder where I should stand. Wow. Pretty epic. Yeah, that is epic. Better person than I have. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> there you go. Okay, you can do anything. Yeah. yeah, you can do anything. Great. That is awesome. Grab it. Grab it at all. That is heavy. 
heavy. It's a long man. Wow, so cool. Really, all he needed was somebody to be on his team. And the reason that he ended up homeless, the reason he ended up losing his prosthetics, all these things that had happened is because he just didn't, he was never educated or taught how to navigate the real world. And he didn't have anybody to talk to and say, hey, can you help me navigate the real world? And just having essentially the foundation, Claire, myself, the foundation, and Carrie, just having this small group of people that had a network of other people that we could rely on, we were able to get him everything that he needed to get him through all of these kind of medical and, uh, you know, just life hurdles. He just needed a little bit of direction and a little bit of help, and that made all the world a difference in keeping him on the right track to recovery. If you want to hear Serge's entire story, I left a link in the description. But essentially, Scientology kicked him to the curb because they believe Serge did something in a past life that warranted having his arms and eyes blown off in the present life. They believe that the disabled are a scourge on society that need to be eradicated. Transhumanism, however, is of the belief that technology can help somebody like Serge. You might have the wrong idea about what transhumanism actually is because of alarmism, but I will just show you a couple of examples of how this can help somebody like Serge. Hello, hello, it's Helia. The opposite X, no gloves, I actually don't have any hands. So I am controlling all of the movements in the hand. Basically they're muscle operated, there's no wires or anything attached. You literally put your arm in and the sensors on this side and on this side. If I squeeze my muscles, the hand will close. And if I flex my muscles, the hand will open. Believe it or not, I actually have full control on whether the hand comes off or stays on. So I've got my dad here to help out. Hello. Say you're trying to mug me. Uh, you're trying to take my hand. Go. Here we go. Uh, He's actually trying, look, we're falling over, not coming off. Now, take it off. Uh, Voila, full control, so I can never get mugged or robbed off my own hands, which is a plus. And I have the most exciting announcement of my life to share with you right now. Um, the NHS have finally decided to change their policies and they've decided that they're going to start funding these bionic arms, like the hero arm, for kids and adults alike. And basically what this means is that people can get this technology and benefit from it and have it and wear it totally for free. Like, it's funded. And it actually makes me emotional because we've been campaigning for this for so long. I think I actually did the NHS trials maybe when I was 11 or 12 and I'm 16 going on 17 now. But it's just finally like, it's been listened to and you can show it's accessible. But the NHS taking this on basically means that we can have all this and they can get better and better and better. I mean, literally, people are getting their hands back and this is what we've wanted since the very beginning. So I'm really happy and I hope that some people who follow me who thought that they could never kind of attain this technology hear this news and know that it won't be long until you can get your hand too and it's just a step in the right direction. <laughs> oh man, I just I just know how many people are gonna benefit from this and they're getting it for free. You don't need to worry. As you may have noted, Tilly is from the UK. And what she's talking about here is one of the primary concerns of transhumanism, that is ethics. She has been lobbying to make sure that poor people can afford to have new arms, just like anybody else. Now, in Serge's case, I'm fairly sure the Aftermath Foundation would have funded bionic arms for him. But he was very young when he lost his arms and he knew how to operate the mechanical arms. And so his preference was the mechanical arms. 
but it does raise the question about America's healthcare system because if Surge had opted for bionic arms, there is no healthcare system that would have paid for it. And that is why the Aftermath Foundation would have, had Surge wanted it, financed bionic arms for him. But the ethics of transhumanism goes way further than that. Whatever is developed in the civil arena of transhumanism is then adopted into the military arena and used to harm people. San Francisco approves the potential use of killer robots by the police. Is this a good decision? Killer robots. It's a scary phrase. I know. Sounds a little bit like Terminator. Maybe not so much end of days, but what a situation we see unfolding in San Francisco. Because in San Francisco, city officials voted to allow the police to use remote-controlled robots in emergency last resort situations. Robots that could have the ability to kill. According to the San Francisco Police Department, they aren't planning to arm the robots with guns, but they could have the robots equipped with explosive charges to, quote, contact, incapacitate, or disorient violent, armed, or dangerous suspects. I take no issue with contacting, disarming, or disorientating armed suspects. My issue is the very first time they used such technology, they didn't disarm or disorientate the suspect. Now, this is not something that's new. We've seen robots like this used before, maybe most notably in 2016 to kill a sniper out in Texas. Uh, the first time a, a robot was actually utilized in like a deadly force situation was the, was the Dallas incident in, in 2016. I'd like to show you some footage about that incident. However, YouTube doesn't like all these trigger words, but essentially they blew the guy up. One of the other aspects about ethics is the machine learning algorithm's ability to discern harm from good. To give you an example of how AI isn't able to replace the human, we'll look at what The Guardian said about this particular scam. This is about crypto scams. The interesting part of this article was this paragraph here, according to the bank TSB, which has called on social media firms to compensate scam victims, Meta platforms hosted 87% of all investment fraud cases at the High Street Bank last year. This is obviously in the UK. 87% of all investment fraud cases recorded at that bank in the UK. Just to punch the point home of what I'm trying to get at here. A couple of weeks ago, I myself got scammed out of $9,000. I know, I'm supposed to be the one who's telling you how not to get scammed, and yet I got scammed. Thanks to Meta's Facebook Marketplace. Kim Ellison's peaceful retirement is off to a rough start. A scam has left her feeling rattled. It's really hard and... and Nobody can afford to be ripped off. Last year, when Kim was moving to Russell Island off Brisbane, she wanted to convert her shipping container into a tiny home. She found what appeared to be the Facebook page of a legitimate Australian freight company and paid $4,500 for a container. The problem was the Facebook page was a fake. People were losing five, ten, even twenty thousand dollars. Melbourne business Magellan Logistics has since been inundated with people demanding to know where their shipping containers are. There are a number of Facebook pages that look more or less similar, using a version of our brand name, Magellan Logistics, in various guises. Mel Wraith made a police complaint and reported six suspect pages to Facebook. It looks like they are all still active except one. That changed yesterday. The suspected scam accounts were taken down after the ABC contacted Facebook's parent company, Meta. The company says it dedicates substantial resources to protecting against fake accounts. As many of you are aware, Australia has just undergone major bushfires and then my particular area was completely wiped out by flooding and I'm talking two storeys high watermark and this has created a housing crisis. 
there are virtually no homes to rent for people whose homes were destroyed in the floods or the fires, and there's even a shortage of homes to buy. So, like the lady in the previous story, I was looking to turn a shipping container or a couple of shipping containers into a tiny home, and I fell for the same scam. Of course, I went through the motions of reporting it to the authorities and blah, blah, blah. And then, first cab off the rank was getting the Facebook ads pulled down. Unfortunately, you don't get anywhere to add the extra information. Like, I had a reference number for the cybersecurity authority to prove that this was legitimately a fraudulent advertisement. So naturally, without being able to add this extra information into the system, Facebook looked at the ad and decided that it didn't go against community standards. And here's the kicker. The more I was looking into the scam, the more Facebook was putting scam ads for shipping containers into my newsfeed. I've since found more than 20 different container scam ads and some originate from the exact same profile ID that has previously been reported as a scam and had the ads taken down. And each day I wake up to find more container scam ads in my newsfeed that I haven't seen before. And for those of you who are jumping up and down about Elon Musk's blue check mark scheme, I'm here to tell you that it's actually a good idea. We have no other way to tell whether a shipping container business is a legitimate business or not, as far as the Facebook ads go. But Facebook is raking in hand over fist profits on these ads. They did start trying to do some kind of blue check mark system until it all became so controversial with Elon Musk and Twitter, but apparently they've canned that idea because of the controversy, and they aren't doing a damn thing to protect consumers from scammers in their Facebook marketplace. Even when the company being impersonated has contacted them to tell them that we're being impersonated. Facebook has an elaborate AI system that pushes ads in your face and an even more elaborate system to make sure that we don't say things that we're not allowed to say. But for some reason, when it comes to scammers, they can repeatedly scam from the same Facebook profile day in and day out without the algorithm catching them. Is AI really ready to take our lives into its own hands? I think not.